Our Judicial Candidates Forum continues with candidates for seat 10. Joining the conversation, Gail Adams and John Tyson both join me on the stage tonight. Thank you so much for participating in this conversation. Thank you for So important me. for voters. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. us. We tossed a coin to determine who would speak first, who would speak last. Mr. Tyson, uh, you are speaking first. And, uh, I'll admit, not a hard-hitting question. There are a lot of new voters out there or, or people that don't pay close attention to Court of Appeals races. Why is, why is now the best time for you to be on the Court of Appeals looking to 2023 and beyond? Thank you, Kelly. And I'd like to thank the North Carolina Bar Association and UNCTV for hosting this forum. Uh, I've been a member of the Bar Association for 42 years. This is my third term I'm seeking for re-election to the Court of Appeals. I was first elected in 2000 and re-elected again in 2014. The Court of Appeals is an error-correcting court. We are a court of right in terms of appeal. That means we get cases from the district and superior courts from all 100 counties across North Carolina and from the administrative agencies of the states too. So the, 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 the attributes that a good judge needs is to have a good general knowledge of all areas of the law. I was a Campbell uh, Law School Charter Class member. I've taught at Campbell Law for the last 35 years. I was a high school teacher, probation parole officer, and deputy sheriff. So I bring forth a wide range of experience. My practice included civil and criminal and administrative law. I'm a board certified specialist in real property law by the state bar. I also hold the highest Martindale Hubble AV preeminent rating for ethics and knowledge of the law. The most important attributes of any judge at a minimum is to be fair and impartial. But above that minimum level, we need to have a demonstrated experience, performance, and transparency. And my record on the court through over 9,000 cases and over 3,000 appeals shows that level of performance and transparency and experience over many years. I have reported to the voters every year my voting, my record of, for the previous year. Number of cases, I have a 98% affirmance or undisturbed rate from the Supreme Court. And I'd ask the voters to reelect me for another term. Thank you. Gail Adams, you are the choice in this race. Why is your time now to join the Court of Appeals? Well, first of all, I would like to thank the North Carolina Bar Association and UNC for hosting this forum. Thank you so much for the opportunity to address the voters as well. The time is now, um, I believe because my diverse legal experience brings me to this point. Um, just to tell you a little bit about my background, um, I was raised in the tobacco fields of Warren County by a single mother of four. And as a result of that background, I learned the importance of hard work. I graduated from UNC Chapel Hill and from North Carolina Central University School of Law before joining the United States Navy as a Judge Advocate General. After I proudly served my country, I worked as an Assistant District Attorney and as an Assistant Federal Public Defender before being elected by the people of North Carolina and the people of Cumberland County to serve as a Superior Court Judge. I was elected in 2012 and so I'm now in my ninth year. I believe that my diverse legal background, as well as my humble background, balances my perspective, broadens my perspective, and makes me an excellent choice for the Court of Appeals at this juncture. Let me follow up with you with the next question. Um, every candidate has websites and ideas you can read up on anyone running for office, but you really hung your hat on the idea you came from Warren County, you worked in tobacco fields, you're raised by a single mother. This is a high level legal position. Why does that matter, and what has it done to make you the lawyer and the judge that you have been all these years? I think that the work ethic that I learned in those tobacco fields are mainly responsible for why I'm here today. That work ethic helped me work my way through college, helped me work my way through law school. I was working three and four jobs in order to pay my way through school. That work ethic also helped me buckle down and study and learn the law, pass the bar exam. Um, so I believe that that background um, helped me get to where I am. Mr. Tyson, 
for your experience, I see 40 plus years. I see 3,500 opinions. Much like that, any broad experience. You just can't teach it, you have to live it. How has that informed you and made you the judge that you are right now and the judge you could be 2023 through 20, what, 2031, I guess, if, after this term's over? The Court of Appeals was founded in 1967. And there's been roughly 90 judges who have served on the Court of Appeals. Since 2001, I have served with over 55 of those judges. I've served with four chief judges on the Court of Appeals. So having that level of experience with that many judges on the Court of Appeals over many years, you learn from each other. You sit together in panels of three, you discuss the cases. We had court this morning. We had a first degree murder case that was argued this morning in the Court of Appeals. So when I sat down with the other two judges on the panel, one was a former district court judge, one was a superior court judge. They bring on unique perspectives and you learn from that. So the biggest, um, the biggest um, quality of serving on the court is the experience and the camaraderie and the collaboration with your other judges. But at some point there will be a new judge that joins the Court of Appeals um, and they won't have that experience, but they'll have qualities. What would you say are the two or three best qualities any appellate court judge could have walking in the door, even if they weren't experienced as you are? Well, I was a high school English teacher. I taught grammar in New Hanover High School. So I think the ability to research and write and be clear in the expression of your opinions is very important. My dean of my law school, Larry Davis, said that he'd rather have an English major as a law student than any other because they know and have the ability to communicate. So the ability to write well, to speak well, to communicate well, to know the meanings of language and of words, and to construct an organized and reasoned opinion are the attributes of appellate that's important for any appellate judge. Ms. Adams, I'll ask you the same question. There are many skills you could bring uh, to the bench. Which ones are important, most important to you if you were to coach someone down the road to say, if you want to be this, you need to bring this? One of the most important attributes I think that a Court of Appeals judge should have is the ability to listen. Because we have to listen to the arguments of counsel, that's how we learn the case and learn what the issues are, is the ability to listen. And once we listen, then the ability to research, do our own research, not just rely on the briefs and the appendices filed by the parties, but also have the ability to do your own research. And I think the other important um, attribute that, that uh, a judge needs to have on the Court of Appeals is the ability to treat people with dignity and respect who are before you and not and understand that when they're before you they know their case and so you should listen to them and listen to the arguments that they're making so that you can understand yourself what the issues are and so I think that the ability to listen and to research and to, and to write of course is very important I was an English major in, in college, and so I understand the importance of writing, and, and writing in a way that the public can understand. Don't use language and don't write in such a manner that it's difficult to understand what the opinion is. It's difficult for the lower court to understand what the opinion is. It's difficult for the parties who are trying to uh, fashion an argument for a judge to hear to understand what the issues are. So those are the attributes that I think are important. As an outsider looking into that court, how do you know the Court of Appeals is running as an operation the best that it can run, that it's, that, that it's firing on all cylinders, if you will? You don't. My, my thing is this. In anything, there is always room for improvement. Nothing is perfect. And the Court of Appeals is not excluded. There is always something better that can be done to improve the justice that they um, provide to the, the public, the people of North Carolina, in order to make the system itself work um, more justly, there's always improvements that can be made. Like I said, it's not just the Court of Appeals, it's, it's in any area of life that you can think about. There's always room for improvement. So no, I don't have any illusions that it is firing on all cylinders. I don't expect that to be the case. Um, I would expect that whatever the issues are, we come in, we figure out what they are, and we work through them. Mr. Tyson, you're on that, uh, you're on that court. It's the same question. As a voter, you know, sometimes you, you don't look at the Court of Appeals as hard as we might 
should as lay people out here. Right. How do we know that court's working the best it can be, and, 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 and what have you done to influence operations on that court? There's an old expression that justice delayed is justice denied. By the time the Court of Appeals gets a case, it's normally anywhere from nine months to a year old. So we have an internal policy that our decisions are supposed to be filed within 90 days of the date we've heard them. I t mentioned earlier that I give an annual report to the voters. It's on my website, judgejohntyson.com, every year. My average time between the day I heard the case until I filed my opinion over the last seven years has been 30 days. So I, have, I am filing my work in less than one-third of the time that the court policy allows. I think that's important. The people have been waiting for a long time. And it's time to get these cases resolved. So that's, that's a very concrete example that we've done. I went back to full-time operations in my chamber in June of 2020. I was in court. Every time we had hearings, I was in the courtroom. So I did not let the pandemic slow us down. If you look at the productivity through the pandemic, the trial courts were shut down. There were no jury trials going on. But the Court of Appeals was still working hard every day primarily on agency appeals, guilty pleas, probation violations, and domestic cases that were coming out of the district courts, as well as the abuse and neglect cases for children. So we never stopped. We were running hard all through the pandemic. We have less than one minute, Ms. Adams, and you get the last word by the coin flip. Um, where do you see the court going in terms of operations? It, we have been through a pandemic, uh, and we discussed that in 2020, but now we're moving forward. What do you expect out of this court? What I expect is efficiency. And what I expect is for a plan to be formulated in order to make sure that the court does, in fact, operate efficiently. That's what I would expect. I would like to, with my last few minutes, to go in and just say a few more things. Um, as a judge, I believe that um, we should follow the law and not some particular political ideology. I don't believe that's the place for the courtroom or the judicial branch. I also believe that as judges, we are supposed to be fair and impartial. It should not matter who you are, what you look like, or where you come from. We should be fair and impartial when we decide cases. I also believe that we should treat people with dignity and respect when they enter inside that courtroom. Those are some of the expectations that I have for myself and for other judges who sit on the Court of Appeals. Because when we all work together, the people of North Carolina win. And that's what we should be concerned about, making sure that we have equal justice for every citizen of North Carolina. That's what the Court of Appeals should be about. Thank you so much for participating in this conversation, this judicial forum. I really appreciate it.